Hey everyone, Red here, and it's time for another Masterclass Coaching, and today's killer is Doctor. Now this player has under 20 hours in the game, they came back to the game, they're looking to get a lot more into killer, they're having fun with it. So we go ahead and break down the gameplay, it is a long video, definitely make sure to stay tuned to the end, there's lots of information here for new to even veteran killers that you might be missing out on in your gameplay to create more pressure. If you are a Doctor main, and you have some tips for this guy, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you're there, make sure to like and subscribe button, and let me know if you're enjoying this series. I really like to look back to the feedback from you guys as we continue down the coaching line here. But other than that, guys, let's go ahead and get into the coaching. Disturbed Ward. All right, this is a very difficult map right off the bat. So Disturbed Ward is a nasty map, um, especially if you get good survivors who do know how to run it. Main building can be a real pain in the ass. You almost want to look, like, right from the start, whenever I get this map, if I'm playing, like, on a serious, like, that's kind of the double-edged sword with a stream. I'm not always playing super serious, but if you're playing this map serious, you need to keep in mind, like, a 3-gen somewhere on the map. Just, like, in your mindset, I'm always looking. I do like, you lay away, take a look around you, which isn't bad. Taking a look around you allows you to get in, like, information on what kind of gens you can play with. So that is a good habit to do. <laughs> so whenever you're playing doctor, a quick thing, I, I, you go over this with pretty much any, uh, any coaching. Whenever we're playing as killer, I like to keep a, a number count, if that makes sense. So, for example, what our count right now is one, right? We have one survivor accounted for. We don't know where the others are, but we do have, if we just kind of play at the map here, we're on, I mean, it's kind of hard to draw this map out. It's just so wonky, but it's kind of like something like this, where it kind of comes out down a little bit and comes out and then goes out a long way. This kind of like this, right? Right now you're here. So my first thought, and I don't want to like see what you do. I just want to show you what you should do and see if your mindset's in the same way. And of course we see, you know, David right here. Hold up. There we go. We got one survivor here. Your biggest thing you want to do whenever you're playing is, especially in an early game, is you almost want to chase this survivor in a direction that allows you to check the remainder of your gens. Now, you don't always have control over this, and good survivors are also going to try and stop this as well, right? If they're running Bond, they don't want to run to a teammate who's working on a gen. But your force is like you're going to want this, short, your, this first chase to be short because you only have a one count. If you have a three count, three survivors accounted for, you know what they're doing, they're not in gens or something like that. That buys you more time to remove resources. Okay. So you want to chase this survivor, preferably if they allow you to, this way. And you have a gen here and here, and that's why I'm saying you want to chase them in this direction. Because you can now a get a higher count. But the best way to look at it, just to simplify things down, your first survivor, the best way to chase them, if we're caring mostly about wins, is chase them into other generators that you haven't checked already. And it's, it's going to be like a byproduct. So you don't want to like, oh, I got to go this way or this way. But it does change how you might position yourself. So I have David like right here, like just off to your side. I don't want him. I don't want to try and cut him off here because I don't want him to go back into the, the corner behind us. Right. Because we just checked that with our static blast. So we know no one's back on that gen. You're, you're trying to do early game is pressure and like resource management. Especially as Doctor. Not only can Doctor sometimes secure quick downs, but he's very good at pressure. That's like his big things. A lot of my big killers, the ones that you, like, if you're going to play against me, the ones you're going to want to, like, not face are going to be, like, my high pressure killers, Wraith, Legion, Doctor. And these are all low tier killers, but with, like, macro decisions, they become very hard to deal with. But we end up chasing him. This is the right way you want to chase him because we're already moving to a gen. And we get account for another survivor so just here in a second we do manage to see i believe another survivor running around right here so i know it's a little blurry but i'm sure you can see this survivor on my mouse yeah i see so we I, have, I didn't see it until you just pointed out though <laughs> yeah I, I, my eyes go because i once you play the map so much things that don't belong will stick out and uh, you know this sticks out to me so now we have a two count. Like, that's my first thought. I got two survivors not on gens. Two survivors must be on gens. I'm always thinking of who has to be on a gen, even if they're not. 
You get spun a little quick, which is fine. Missing the first hit isn't too big of a deal. Just slow down a little bit and you'll hit that first one. And now we're chasing into the corner I don't want you to chase into. So these are chases. Like the biggest problem for most killers is to break a chase. This was a break chase moment right away. Because we have two things that we don't want to play at, right? We know there's not really anyone on this gen, or at least the stag blast didn't reveal it. So I wouldn't want to go there. And two, it's Shaq. Like he's beelining at the moment for Shaq. Or at least a good survivor will. So as soon as you get that hit, you can save yourself a few seconds. And assuming you saw the survivor, in, in hindsight, I know you didn't. But if you would have seen that survivor, you could have left David, went for her, and chased her back into those gens you haven't checked yet. You know, the, one of the killer's jobs is to patrol gens. So you have to be able to multitask a chase into patrol as well. Though it looks like he's taking the route to... Oh. That's not bad. That works out. Yeah. A quick down works out. You're able to justify pretty much anything at that point. I, I already looked at mistake that here. Uh, like I, I ended up missing the hook that was right behind me. <laughs> and going oh. to the one further away. Yeah. That's okay. That's a, that's a simple mistake. Oh, what gem was that? I would always look whenever a gem pops to see what gen. I bet you anything that gen might have been able to be prevented. It would have been it was really close though. Was it the one in the corner? Yeah, okay. It was the one in the corner, so that's the one that you might have chased into. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you got the, if you were chased into, now it doesn't mean it doesn't work out. You're going to lose a gen. It's just perks of being a killer, especially with like no corrupt. But if you happen to chase into a gen, if you can deny like those early two or three gens from going, is like a pressure spike early game, which is something killer doesn't normally have. So when you're looking for stag blast, what are you looking for specifically? Because I noticed you stopped yourself. Was that just like a misclick, or did you like rethink uh, what you I wanted? I realized I thought I was going to be a bit too far from any survivors there, so I just wanted to go a little bit further. Okay. So I realized I literally just just got him on hook, and it was like right in the corner of the map. So yeah. I, didn't, I thought it would be a bit pointless. So, so there's a few types of stag blast that you can utilize that are like when you like in mindset what you can look at. Um, is it an altruistic group? If so, then you might want to stag blast on the hook, right? Because they're going to be nearby. Um, two is stag blast your three gen or your protected gens. So you want to get closer to that, the gens that are priority. So whenever you enter a match, like I said, find a three gen. Those are priority gens. If you're playing, I know you don't have a lot of map experience at the moment, so I can't really use maps, but the three closest gens together are priority gens because they're much easier to protect than three gens that are super far apart. Yeah, I'm not very good at looking for a free gen. That's one of the things. Like when I get in a game and I look for a free gen, I always struggle to actually find one. Oh uh, well, you have kind of one here. This maps. It also depends on the map. You kind of have one here. Look at like stag blast. If stag blast can hit three gens, you're probably fine. So we have two gens there. We have a third gen kind of off. You could utilize this gen. The gen back there in main building, or you could utilize even this gen back here. And the reason why I say that you could use, because not all three gens are equal, right? There are some three gens that are way better, like playing on the game with three gens upstairs, all in like rooms next to each other. That's like an amazing three gen. But even this, we have a gen right over here, and then one gen here. This is fine, um, because with this map specifically, I know you don't know maps, there's not a lot of resources over here, right? So it has no resources really to play with. It has like one or two pallets and that's it. And then same thing with this gen here is there's not a lot of wiggle room either. So I'll just do an X there. Upstairs has a lot of resources. So it's not one you want to necessarily have, but you don't ha always have a choice of what three gen you get. Yeah, before this game, I was on um, the game map and it was... I, I, well, I won that one so quickly. <laughs> that, was a, that was an easy game. Doctor does good on smaller maps because he gets a lot more value out of his uh, static blasts and shocks. Big maps, you have to think a little... You have to consolidate a map down. So, like, whenever you think of a massive map, yeah, the game might be like this, and your 32-meter radius hits that much of the map. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I'm always hitting somebody, and I'm getting pressure always. But if you get a map that's 
you know, like this, your static blast is now like this. So you're not getting like the whole entirety of a map. And this is what this map is. This is a very large map, so you don't get to cover as much, like as much of the, uh, I guess, meters as you would like to, because the gens are meters spread out throughout the whole map. So what you can always do is you can always kind of cut off part of the map. And I've I've done this before already. If you've seen the other coaching video, and if you just like think, okay, there's nothing of value for me in this area, or there's like one gen by itself, there's no real reason for me to ever be there. Now it allows you to kind of think in advance, like, okay, I don't want to stag blast here, but I'll stag blast here because it'll cover more of the open or the gens. And that changes depending on like what kind of gens you have around you. We do find somebody. I'm always touchy on whether or not I like main building here. It's not bad to check it out, but it is a little risk. I don't know my way around this map at all, which is like it would come like walking into things on this map. Yeah, nope, that's it's gonna happen. If you walk into stuff, I'm not gonna hit you on it again. That's just game time. You just need some more game time for that stuff. That's something that as you play, that efficiency will go up. So we are going, it looks like back to hook, and did you kinda just get Law some where you want it to go, or just think that's where you're gonna get the best pressure. I I genuinely had no idea where to go. It's like I've never I don't I very rarely. Like, this is the first time I've been on a map this big. I think since I started going killer again. Okay. Uh, so I just got a bit confused. And... You hold yourself. It happens. It's fine. Yeah, I I, I was embarrassed, and I just I was I was I was ready to just walk away and go find someone else. I hold my to... I think I hold myself the other day on the, like a game, and I just wasn't thinking. It's fine. Anything like the the problem with like playing killer, especially if you're new, is you feel like you have all the pressure in the world on you, because you don't know the map, you, you're not sure what to do. We almost got a hit there. I always go a little bit too early. Uh, I need to get used to the timing. That was just because you kept moving your... You kind of moved around a lot, so your hit didn't go just straight. Okay, cool. I'm... Yeah, right here. So when it comes down to this map here, or anytime you think there's like a big... Especially with this map. This map is always hard, but because you don't, there's a breakable wall over here. Because it's not broken, the chase ends, like, here. As soon as, like, they get to this point, you have to realize they get so much distance that chasing them now becomes, like, a downfall to the game. So you don't want to continue this chase anymore. The reason why, as killers, you want to break chase, especially if you're a guy like an injury or, like, a pallet out of the way, is because you're, you're prepping for later in the game. If he's injured and comes back to this gen and you catch him upstairs again, he's going to go down much quicker than if you actually try and chase him here. The only place he has to go from here is to the gen behind him at shack, which we don't really want to play at too much unless we have to. Or he has to go find a teammate, heal up, and that takes out time that he's on a gen, which gives you more time to play the game and feel more comfortable. Plus, how many? Go ahead. How many gens are there on a map? What does it change? Seven. So there's always going to be seven. You have to do, yep. And that's why the three gen is always there. Right. So then, because then if you can protect those three, they can't get the last gen. Correct. And like, again, good groups are going to try and break it up. But as far as like this goes, a survivor's goal when they first get into a map, if it's like a swift or like a really solid group, they want to break the three gen right away and then play out from there. And they want to separate. They don't want to double up on gens unless they absolutely have to. Now, you do have Overcharge, which is a good slowdown. Obviously, it's only Tier 1. I don't want to go too hard into the perks. Jolt's fine. Bitter Murmur to give you information. Those don't hurt you at all. But Corrupt, if you can find a way to get Corrupt, I would recommend it. What killer is that one for? Oh, uh, that's Plague. Um, I do like the look of Plague. I was considering going for a... But, She's fun. I'm uh, uploading a video today on Plague. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite... One like one of my favorite killers to watch on your channel. I always like watching the videos. Yeah, she she needs a little bit of love, but so right here, 
by the way, as far as like correct plays and stuff, this is kind of a this is a silly survivor moment because there's no reason he should ever head back inside here. So this is what we call like you know you kind of just get handed a, a a hook here, but whenever something like this happens, I would almost always break this door. This is a must break wall. Because it allows you, because this leads right outside to where that vault is. So if they ever take the vault, you can head here and kind of cut them off. Now, what he should do as a survivor is he would normally, if this is like a solid group, they're not going to come back inside where you're at. They're going to go over here to the gen or to shack is what I should say. Because it's safe and they have a gen there. Him coming back inside is probably him having not much of an idea on the map as well. So you're kind of on equal well, playing field there. Yeah, when I saw his distance, I was gonna like get, I was gonna literally just kick that door down and mm -hmm. leave the chase. When I saw him run back in, I'm like, I might as well go for it. Yeah, no, for sure. If he makes a mistake, I mean, that's that's part of killer right there. You did have stag blast here. You could justify stag blast right now onto the gens that people are working on just to spread out a little bit more madness. You can go both ways with it. I probably would just because the game is going a little not in our favor right now, and I want to create some kind of pressure. That way the cooldown can start happening a little quicker. Because from upstairs, it's going to take you 15 seconds to get this guy in a hook. This is why a lot of people don't really ever think about like why slugging is so strong. I don't want you to start slugging because you just came back to the game. I'd rather you keep it simple. Um, hook one-to-ones, kind of learn it out, get the feel of the game. But if you would stag blast there, you know, we have, it's 4.03 when you picked up. You know, your cooldown is going to be coming back. Yeah, yeah. At least in this area. If there's a hook nearby, you don't have to. You might actually lose him. Yeah. He was close. So right there, in order to fully hook him, it took you almost, you know, you're at 403. It almost took you 20 seconds to get him here. You see what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of time in the game where, and that's what a lot of killers do, is like they'll get into this one-to-one -one mindset. What you need to think of is like the picture as a whole as killer. And even if that stag blast doesn't stop them from doing that gen, it gets their madness up at least a tier, which is going to be helpful in the future. And your cooldown is going to be coming back. You'd be almost, you know, I think it's I think it's actually a minute cooldown overall, but you'd be pretty close to being back onto it. Bitter Murmur does give you information here. You know, you said uh, that I shouldn't really do any um, like slugging yet, but I got no. a really good slug play yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was kind of like the only time I've managed to get a good slug. Go in and uh, it was. I was on that map with the big boat house in the middle or something. Uh, it's got some Swamp? like boat in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I was. I was on that one and I managed to have one of them on hook, and then they all got all clumped together and I managed to get f all three of them slugged and on hook within like two minutes into the game. Yeah, that's good slug prep. That that you should always take advantage of. But there are times where you should just slug a survivor to go to another location. So this is, this is a little bit more advanced, so I don't want to go too much into it because you are just bag. But a, a good example would be, I do this on Sadako all the time. I have a big map. I slug a survivor here, and there's a gen over here, and there's no hooks nearby. So there's no hooks. I'm just going to let this person stay on the ground and go over here. Because I might have survivors here. Again, I want to pressure more survivors. And if it takes me 20 seconds to hook a survivor, that's 20 seconds they have on gents. I'm guessing that's probably the reason I lost... Well, at least one of the reasons I lost that other gen, right? As I was hooking the other guy. Yeah, you lost 20 seconds where you could have actually gotten to the gen. That's why if you stag blast... Or for, so if we go back to this point, why stag blasting might have been better is not only for like the stag blast, but it's going to be for... But if you would have stag blast when you originally down this guy, you would have had 20 seconds to get over there and stop that gen. Now you can make it to that gen in 20 seconds. So you get to stop that gen from ever happening, right? And you might even get the potential to down someone over there. If it's the injured David over there and you down him, Jolt goes off, stops the gen for, you know, starts the regression on the gen. You can then transfer that maybe over to hitting the other David real quick, looking for that extra that extra little bit, you might end up giving up the slug. Like, you might end up giving up this survivor on a hook state. But you might get him in return, plus you deny a gen. 
so you get more value out of display. Yeah, plus uh, then there would have also just been more pressure in general because yep. they would have had to get one more person off Jen to come in. Correct. So then you get in, and then you get into my count again. So how many survivors? Because let's you know if we go back to it, you know one is slugged. So ignore my horrible handwriting here. But one slugged. You stag blast. You find two on a gen. If you chase them, most likely the other one has to come in for the save. So now who can be on gens? So, so essentially, if I just left him slugged and went for the gen, I would have had everyone off gens. It's possible. Now, it's, it, it is possible that this guy here, if you don't manage to chase like both of them and pressure him, he might go for the save. But then you only have zero to one on a gen. Your games go slower. A lot of people, when they, whenever yeah. they watch my videos and, you know, they'll complain, oh, my survivors, you know, they do all the gens and... It's because they're not thinking, like, how many survivors are they keeping busy with pressure? I'm always thinking. Like, I, you know, I talk on stream and stuff, but I'm always thinking how many survivors do I have busy right now? You know, who's going to pop what gen? And, like, how can I stop them from being able to pop the gen and just get the most pressure possible? There are unwinnable games in this game. There, it's going to happen. Um, was this an unwinnable game? No, for sure not. But those are ways that you can help slow down the game to give yourself the best chance to win. And that's really what comes down. The killer's job early on is to slow the game down, remove resources, not necessarily to kill a survivor. I want you to think of like cooking survivors and killing survivors as more of a byproduct of playing efficiently. The kills and stuff, they will come to you if you play efficiently. Even the best survivors in the world, if you're playing efficiently and there's no pallets near them, the only thing they can do is try and 360 you. So we get a count of all survivors. I think you missed the one that's on the gen over here because he was blending in with the red. We have the two count here, which is fine. So like right now you have a three count. No, you only have one survivor who's possibly on a gen. I did keep on... I don't know how I didn't clock at the time that they were clearly trying to run me back to main building because I just felt like I was going back there every 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Survivors will. Yeah. They love main building. This is fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. missing hits is fine. I'm not going to harbing you too much. Just slow down a bit. Just... Yeah, I, I feel like I rush it. Cause yep. it's, on, on this game, it was like 50% of the hits at least that I missed. Yep, just just relax. Um, you you're not gonna get that relaxed like right away, but you will become relaxed the more you play. Just relax, wait a second. If they're moving sporadically, and then go for the hit. And you're everyone's gonna get spun at least sometime. I get spun on stream. I get spun less when I'm actually paying attention to the game. But when you're when you're in this moment, take a step back. If they're spinning weirdly, camera control. It's something. That it's definitely. I can see you kind of yanking your camera around. So camera control's got to get a little better, but that will come with time. So I don't want to worry about it too much right now. And you'll get those hits by just relaxing a bit and giving it a second to breathe. If they're by a pallet, yeah, you might have to rush a hit and miss it. But he's not by a pallet. And see how he's he's kind of he's he's panicking you, but all he's doing is running around you. This is a good time to leave chase or go for pallet. I want to say it in advance because if you get the pallet, I want to see you break chase. Fortunately, he's sitting at the pallet. Oh, I mean, that works too if he's going to do that. <laughs> I think he thought I was going to come back the other way. I don't know what he was but thinking. That pallet should have been dropped or he should have ran it. That's just a silly survivor moment. Yeah, I think he was paying more attention to, like, looking the other way. He didn't, he didn't think I was going to come back. He probably thought I was going to try mind gaming him or something and come back in. So he's paying more attention to that. Yeah. So this static blast you do is actually bad. And let me explain why. Again, we want to cover gens. I don't, at this point, you're, you want to cover gens. We've kind of came to the point where, like, this survivor group's probably solo queue, and they're doing their own thing. So you're covering one gen with this static blast. If you would have just went to main building, 
and Stag Blast, you might have been able to cover two gens, or at least a little bit more of the map. Stag Blasting on like the edge of the map doesn't typically do Doctor a lot of good. And because this group isn't all in your face 24-7 right now, there's no reason to Stag Blast right here. If that makes sense. You have... I was just seeing if anyone was nearby, because I noticed on like the last two hooks, they were getting unhooked quite quickly. Mm -hmm. but, like... I, was, I was thinking maybe they're nearby when they get hooked, so I was going to try and... So a way to yeah. think about it is you have a 32 meter radius, right? With your Stag Blast, because it goes off your Terror Radius. You can get 20 meters away from the hook, and stag blast, and you'll still catch people who are going for the hook. But you'll so if, have access to more of the map. So, so if I go for one of the like insane, uh, what's it, terror radius build, I can just get more stag blast. Technically, yeah. I mean, that's why those terror radius work builds work with uh, Doctor. But you still need to think about your your placement of stag blast. Um, I would say watch a few of my, when you watch a few of my doctor videos, watch where I do the static blast. Yeah, sometimes they'll be on hook, but normally I, I try and get a little bit distance away from the hook before I'll static blast. It's a lot like Legion. If you, uh, frenzy someone who's somewhat by the hook, even if they're injured, you could then get so much more information on where everybody's at. That way you can make a call. If you were stepped into, let's say 20 meters away from here, where you're almost in main building, and maybe you see this guy, you don't even have to static blast him. Maybe you see him. Well, then you can static blast, and it's like, oh, shit, no one else is here. I can chase this guy, or I can fake chase this guy and, and kind of come back around to the hook, because now someone else has to go for the hook. Again, now how many survivors are we affecting? Three. This guy thinks he's being chased. One guy's on hook. One has to come for the hook. Only one's on a gen again. Three or more is the best way to create pressure. Unfortunately, this might create the illusion of like you wanting this chase. I don't want this chase if he's in main, and it looks like he went straight into hiding. So he went back around to get the save there on you. I'm pretty sure that was at least him, because you would have caught the other survivor. I won't be able to read scratch marks too much, but I did see them on the wall to your side here a moment ago. So, right... Right here. There's a scratch marks right up there. I don't even know how you spell that stuff, honestly. It, like I said, I, I have a lot of time. I play this game for a living, so I see shit like... <laughs> I'll see stuff like... If there were scratch marks over here, I would see it like at the on a turn of a dime or something. And people would be like, oh, there's no way you noticed that. I, I noticed it. It gets a little brighter as you go. If they're right here now. Do you look at it? Yeah. I did see them on the wall to the right, but that's the only place I end up seeing them on. So right. that's kind of where I tried looking. Yeah, if you see scratch marks here and then here, survivors are only going in this area. But then they're kind of walk leading me away from where they're doing all the gens. So that if I end up chasing them that yeah. way, then... Yeah, that's fine. If you were to break this chase, I wouldn't mind. But if you were going to break this chase... You should have decided that then. Right? They're yeah. not by a gen. So, again, it comes down to time efficiencies. We're at 556. I want to hold up this timer because I want you to see the, the time that's going. Yeah, because this is like 20 seconds at least that I've just it's wasted like 30 already. 30 seconds. Now, you do manage to get over here, so we can kind of trim some of that down. Let's go ahead and trim down 10 seconds. We'll go with 20 then, because you could have beelined here instead if you wanted to. But you know what would have caught these survivors on this gen? Why? If they're there, though, what would Static Plus actually if you would achieve? Have, if you would have left the hook about 20 meters, they would have been caught in the blast, and you would have known they were on that gen. Oh, so if I if I save that static blast, if you would have saved the static, if you would have saved the static blast a second and got on a little bit of ways, it's possible you tag one or two of them. Because again, your your angle would have been in this area towards the gens. If we go back to when you hooked him, because if you hooked him, you get the static blast. If you would have just headed towards your gens, like like I was mentioning a second ago, I'm gonna try and get a good angle shot here on this. Like, you're already looking over this way. It's just barely out of range. This gen right here is out of range. 
But if you were just headed up, like I said, in this direction, you tagged him a stack blast, hundred percent. Well, so if I just went a bit further, yep. like to the the um, main building, I would have probably gotten. You him. probably would have snagged him, or at least one of them. The other one might have been out. Of, it would have been close, but you would have snagged them most likely if you just held on a few seconds and got away from the hook. Stag Blast, again, the only time I'd ever do it near a hook is if I really think survivors, like, two or more, are, like, lurking around. Or it's a smaller map. You can't get away with it on bigger maps like this. Big maps will punish uh, micro mistakes like this. Because on a small map, you can still tag two or three survivors, even though you're kind of in a corner, it's not the best place, but they don't really have anywhere else to go. On big maps, they have plenty of places to go. It's like, what, when it's just by itself, it doesn't seem like that much. But when you add all the little fucky wookies together, it just makes it something yeah. huge, doesn't it? Well, that's and it. I yeah. So much, I lose so much from all the really small mistakes I'm making all over the place that it adds up to being yeah. like one big mess. Have I said any? Have I said anything about like you're chasing yet? No. Not I don't think not so. a thing. Because most killers' problems aren't chasing. You haven't made any chasing mistakes at the moment that would be like, oh, oh, you need to be doing this. It's literally just in these little micro things that add up. And it's, it's just time. It's the number one problem for killers when they first start playing killer or when they start getting against some better survivors is they lose out how to do time efficiency. So we decide we go back here. This is fine. You end up correcting it by deciding, nope, I don't want to be in this chase or leading me away from gens. And you manage to find them. But I think you might be finding him just a little too late because that gen is going. But you have one survivor is injured, so jolt value. Oh. If you lunge, you might get it. So if you hold your basic attack down, you'll get the lunge. That also helps also with survivors who are trying to uh, 360 you. It doesn't pull your camera as much, and it kind of helps you readjust. Well, there was, I think, three of them on this gen, so I, don't, I think I would have lost it anyway. You, you probably would have. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to take the risk, you can start the lunge right now, and you hit him right now. It's close. You might have been able to, though. If you would have packed the jolt, that would have been hilarious. A lunge might have done it. I'm not saying it would have. It just might have. This is yeah. good slug pressure. I like it. This is a good time to slug. You have three or more. You're pretty busy here. You gotta take a lunge there. Yeah, you're not lunging. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really. I'm not good at like lunging or anything. I'm not sure exactly how to do it. So you, you like I know, whenever, Yeah, whenever you like. No, how about I'm not good at the timing. You know like, what I mean? Hold forward and just hold the button, and it'll readjust a little bit. There is some auto aim and auto assist, so it'll help out a bit. Yeah, it's just really the the timing that I need to get down, and it is just it. I'm not great with that. This is becoming sketchy. So, like, now it's becoming a little sketchy on whether or not I want to keep this chase up. Yeah, that was why. Because he got picked up. Or he picked himself up with Unbreakable. No, someone tagged him. I saw their head. Yeah, at this point in the game, I was starting to get a bit... Uh, nervous? Like, worried. Yeah, I was getting pretty nervous. And I was getting a bit more restless with it. And I was just kind of making... I was getting more... Erratic with all the things that like that there. I just hit the stairs even though he's nowhere near because I just wanted to try and get one more hit. Uh, and now I see I probably shouldn't have even picked her up. I probably should have carried like looking for someone, but I probably could have started blasting then. But Did he just dead hard into that chair or something? Yeah, or? yeah, that was a dead hard. Yeah, slow down. That was definitely a free. Yeah. So this is a, a. We can do a lot of this to simplicities. You're rushing a little too much. You're getting. I can tell you're getting nervous in the game, or you're getting like frazzled. So slow down a little bit. It's fine, and just guarantee the hit. Because that definitely should have been a two person down. This pickup, yeah, is probably a mistake. You should have stag blast because I think they're on the gen above you. That might have been a time to create that slug pressure. And then, yeah, we're taking up the time. They're going to get that gen done most likely by the time we get inside. It's going to be really hard. Unless they're healing. Just, 
I've wasted time getting to that, and then we're yep. wasting more time getting back there. So yeah. I don't even know why a static blasted. I already knew they were in there. Well, the static blast I'm okay with. It, you, at both points, time is fine. Now the chase you decide to go on, I'm not okay with. There we go. You, you're like your first thought should have been Jen, and then yeah, you I, go I, from there. Well, that's when when I actually saw that they were on the Jen. That's yep. when I thought like that's when I noticed like and then turned around. Yeah, okay, so lunging, yeah, so this is going to be a chase mistake I'll tag you on. You need to start lunging. It's going to help you a lot when it comes to these things. Oh, it doesn't, it's not going as much as I thought. I thought it was going, like, way harder. The reason I decided to kick it there is because I thought, like, as soon as I carry on this chase, the other person's probably going to hop out of whatever locker they're in and go back to it. Uh, and I want to try and get, like, eruption on it. Okay. Um, so. well, you don't have a, you have overcharge, which takes like 30 oh, seconds yeah. to get any value of, um, it's not, fine. yeah, I got, confused. I've just been watching too much videos <laughs> and getting confused and stuff. Cause I don't really know much about perks. Well, it's not even just that. It's just like, you want, you might watch a video and you might see me kick a gen at a certain time and be like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to kick a gen after this hit, but I might be doing it for a specific reason. Like I might be break. If you would have told me I'm. I'm kicking this gen because I'm breaking the chase because I want to go back to the hook where two survivors are. I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But you told me you just wanted to get like overcharged on this and that was about the extent of it. We got to think a little bit advanced and you almost go back to the chase. You can't go back to a chase after you kick a gen like this unless they're cornered. Like if they're in a corner of the map with a gen here and they have a tile like right here they're playing on. Let's do a big T there. Like, yeah, you can... You can kick the gen all day. Fuck that gen. Because you have them cornered. But you're doing it in a main building that has all the nice sunlight, <laughs> all the outs that you can have from a, a, a tile set. There's no way I'm ever kicking a gen and then going back into chase on the same person I just left and you let them have distance. Yeah, um, I, just, I think it's one of those things, it's like it, it, practice and... It's one of those big things, like, this was only my second game of the day, and I got a 4k right before it, so I was feeling a bit confident, that's why when I started losing, I was like, what, why am I losing now? <laughs> it's fine, Lo losses are gonna happen, it's not, no one wins every game. You can increase your win percent, but even then, you're, you're bound to lose a game due to unluck, or bad RNG, or just a really solid group that really is efficient. I wasn't sure if they got, these guys were actually a group or not. I assume they were because they were all on like the same gen. They seemed to be helping no. each other a lot. I would say this but... is a solo queue game. Nope. A lot of people like to jump to like Swift. Like it must be a Swift if like they're on the same gens or they're taking hits. But no, nothing here really sticks out to me as like a Swift group. This just seems to stick out as like a solo queue group who's doing gens and there's a lot of efficiency misplaced that makes them feel like the game's going by faster this would probably how feel you, like a quick game how do you pin like how do you how do you pinpoint when it is a uh, group my my first thought would be why do you care uh, just so i don't keep on because a couple games I, I start thinking like i think these guys are in a group and then like you just said they're not even on a group so it's like i just it's like a misjudging it yeah, I'm reading because of the plays they're making. Um, typically, group survivors are going to make a little bit more altruistic plays, a little riskier plays, or they'll <laughs> kill the gents in like five and a half minutes, and they'll all be separated at all the time. They won't be grouping up. Good swifts don't group up. They, they crank gens and bounce. Like, they're efficient as hell. Or they're altruistic as hell. This group really didn't either. They, they hopped on Jen. This is just like a solo crew group trying to get Jens done and leave. That's all it was. This doesn't really seem... Now, they could have been a Swift, like I said, but at the end of the day, my thing is, like, what does it matter at to a point? Because if they are a Swift, they didn't do anything that was, like, superbly, like, oh, my God, you know, we lost this game because it was a Swift with good coordination. Nah, that, that really isn't it. So... And, and Swifts in general, the only time you should be worried about a Swift is, like, if the Swift has, like, on average, every player has, like, six to 7,000 hours. Yeah, that's a pretty scary fucking Swift. But most Swifts are just people in chat chilling, laughing, having a good time. You know what I mean? They're not really talking, 
oh, I'm at this location and I'm at like, I'm north of main building at two gens. We can break the third gen on this. I have four of the people. If you swoop in, take a hit, we can double. They're not doing that as much as like people think. Stag Blast here needs to be covering both doors. Or, I, well, no, you could justify it. I'm not right. You could justify looking for someone by the hook. Never mind. I'm not upset with this. It is in a corner. You could wait a little bit longer before Stag Blasting, but that's fine. Again, it's just I don't know the map either, so it's kind of a... Um, yeah, but you don't uh, have you don't have to know the map in that in that point. That's just, like, rule of thumb. Yeah, I just didn't even know I was in the corner. That's the thing I'm not... I don't, I don't think I was paying too much attention to where I was in the map. Like, that's... Well, if you just you know do, a, I mean? do a good rule of thumb, 10, 15 meters away from the hook before I ever stag blast for any reason. There you go. And now, now it's kind of fixed, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got one here. I like this. This is a good chase to take unless that door's open over there. Because he only has one pallet coming up. This is because I know the map really well. Well, he's just beelining it. Oh, no. We don't do this. This is a chasing mistake. There's no reason to stag shock him here. He's got a... I'm going to do this real quick for pallet. And he's running on this side of it, right? Th this is 100%. You don't stag shock. I'm going to use black here. You're just going to take up this position. And then like do a little mind game on him if you can and just tag him. Like, he, he doesn't get much there. It's a, literally the whole point on this little tile here is you can lunge around damn near the whole thing. This is where lunging... It's, lunging is going to be something you work on for sure as you play. I would just start lunging after every hit to get yourself used to it. Was what, what, you know, when I saw him coming back around, I was going to try and get him so he couldn't, you know, try and get the... The pallet? The uh, pallet on me. Mm -hmm. So then I was going to try and, like... So just step into the pallet. So, like, look where he's at. You see how he took a step back? Because he wasn't, he wasn't sure he was going to get it. I'm taking I'm just going to walk into the pallet and then trap him on this brush. Because now he can't go anywhere and he can't drop the pallet because he's on the other, he's on the wrong side. He wants to be on, he wants to have access to the pallet. You denied him as soon as you stepped up, but then you give it to him right here. You should be able to get this down once you get the, yeah, lunges for like the next week. Just lunge only. Just teach your like body that. You managed to get it, which is fine. Took a few extra seconds than I would have wanted, but I mean, at this point, I've already opened the gate, so it was a bit too late to get too many people on hook, but... Not necessarily. I don't like your hook placement here. This is another thing that killers don't think about. We get the down, takes us a few extra seconds. We don't look around, except we just see a hook here, and we're like, yep, that's the hook. That's the one I'm going for, boss. Why not take them away from the gen? Like, them away from the door? Like, this is pretty close to the door that's just right over here. And there's another hook that's to your left. I know you didn't see it. I, I know it's there, and I just saw it a moment ago. That's actually a little bit farther from the hook, and that would be a better choice than this one. This one just gets him a little closer to the to the gate. I know you're just looking. He might If he's not on hook, it doesn't matter. I don't even realize if he is. But... If he's not dead on hook, you want to be thinking about hook placement. And speaking of putting them too close to the gates, I make another mistake like that a bit later on, which I think you're going to pinpoint a bit. <laughs> you're definitely going to notice that mistake, because I noticed like, as soon as I did it, and I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. You got everyone injured, though. This is a good place to be in for an endgame scenario. That works. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, I was really annoyed then. I was like, for God's sake, I'm gonna rush him. <laughs> Every time it happens, oh, you're gonna put him on that hook. Yeah, this is the mistake I was talking about. Literally killing right me. Right you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a big old Big old no no. <laughs> he was probably so happy when he got put on the hook. Uh, I would be fucking ecstatic. Hey guys, heal up. We're good. <laughs> like, yeah, you start going in the right direction, but then you kind of change it here. This I don't like, just because they you almost want to be closer to him. If you're gonna like 
sit by a hook, at least get like a little bit better angle. I don't got a problem with people like sitting by the hook at the right time. This is the right time. You don't want to give up that kill. It's like, it's like when people sit on first hook that it's toxic, really. It's not toxic. It's never toxic. It's such a, it's just a way people have used to, you can play, a survivor group can play around it. It's not toxic. Survivor mains may complain about it, but it just, if it happens to you, it happens. Survivors should be able to crank gens and leave at that point. And there's a new perk coming in to help that too. Yeah, that's one of the points I've, um, I always make when people complain about it. I'm like, more aware, like, you might lose one person, but you can get all three people working on gens, and by the time that person's dead on hook, you can literally, all the gens will be done. And he'll probably leave as yeah. soon as he sees all the gens getting done. And this issue will also be resolved when they swap the win settings for Survivor. So right now, if you win as a Survivor, it's only if you escape the match via the door. Later on, they've already announced they're going to change it to team-based. So it'll be team-based whether or not you escape. It'll make it feel a little bit better. All right, so we get the we get the one. That's fine. I was kind of reluctant to pick him up in case he DS'd me, and I would have just started crying there's, on the spot. <laughs> there's no more DS at end game. Oh, I didn't actually. Know. Yep, you can't actually have DS anymore at the end game. It got removed. I feel like they're nerfing everything at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, they need to. They, they're making actually really healthy changes for the game right now. People aren't happy with it. I don't give behavior a lot of credit, but they made a lot of good changes recently. Okay. And that's the game. Um, I think overall, this is a pretty good session to start off with, man. You got a lot of things to work on still, which is fine. Um, I would never worry. And by the way, another way to tell if it's like a Swift group, typically they'll all be the same. They'll either all be console or they'll all be PC. I want you to lunge after every hit from here on out. I think that's a big, big point you need to kind of drive home. Keep in mind your static blasts and keep in count of, like, survivors you have around you. And then just play the game. I don't want you to worry too much about wins or losses right now. It's really easy to get discouraged. I want you to focus on, like, the pressure you can generate. You can translate pressure into wins very easily later down the line. But I want you to really hammer home on, like, pressure, pressure, pressure. Versus like, oh, I, you know, I didn't get a 3k every game. Like I see these people doing it. I got 5,000 hours in the game and do it for a living. I, you know, I should have probably around an 80 to 90% kill rate. And that's currently where I hover. So you can get to that point, but you also got to put probably a few hundred hours in before you start getting there. Yeah. I'm not expecting to be there anytime soon. I'm just. But by just... learning pressure, you'll feel better in the game as well. Overall, it's just time efficiency that kills you in this game. Nothing else, really. The chases weren't really bad. Even with all the missed swings, they weren't like long chases. It's just that the other time efficiencies are kind of killing you. And that will be helpful after you play a little bit more and understand some of the maps. But part of it is, like I said, you have the static blast. You need to think a little bit more about the four versus one, not the one versus one. But overall, man, that's all I got for you today. I hope it was, uh, hope it was solid. Yes, it was pretty good. It was more in depth than a expect i didn't i thought it was going to be like a, a 20 minute thing at most but it's been quite quite a lot